Nuclear energy, with its immense potential and equally significant risks, has long been a topic of fierce debate. Yet, despite the controversy, the United States is on the verge of making a bold move. It's about to launch the largest nuclear power plant in the country, a project decades in the making. Why, in an age when renewable energy sources like wind and solar are gaining momentum, is nuclear power still considered a viable solution? Today, let's explore the ambitious plan to transform a 40-year-old nuclear power plant into America's largest power source. Could this massive project be the key to a cleaner, more reliable energy future, or are we on the brink of a costly mistake? Let's find out! Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. On paper, nuclear energy stands out as one of the top choices for generating power. Unlike fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, it produces electricity without releasing carbon dioxide or other harmful pollutants, making it a crucial resource in the fight against climate change. However, the process of creating nuclear energy leaves behind some radioactive waste. This waste is hazardous and can pose significant risks to humans and other life. While nuclear power plants strive to contain this waste safely, there have been several well-known accidents in recent decades. In 2011, the Fukushima nuclear plant on Japan's coast was hit by an earthquake followed by a tsunami leading to one of the most severe nuclear disasters in history. Radioactive materials leaked into the ocean and rose into the local atmosphere. Residents within a 20 kilometers radius were evacuated, and more than a decade later, the area still remains radioactive. Before Fukushima, the infamous 1986 Chernobyl disaster occurred in Ukraine, where the plant exploded, releasing radioactive clouds that spread across Europe. This exposure affected millions of people, causing increased rates of cancer and birth defects. Approximately 3 million people in Ukraine alone suffered from the consequences of the Chernobyl event. Following these incidents, many countries began shutting down nuclear power plants and transitioning to alternative energy sources, though not all nations have followed this trend. If you live in Georgia in the United States, you may be familiar with the Vogtol nuclear plant. It's an older facility that the country began planning in the 1970s. Back then, before disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima, there was a surge of enthusiasm for nuclear energy. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission was issuing numerous construction permits, aiming to build as many plants as possible. At that time, the potential risks were largely unknown. Vogtol was one of the plants approved during this period. The design included two separate units, each with its own reactor, along with a pair of massive cooling towers. Standing at 170 meters, these towers were taller than many skyscrapers of the era. Constructing the Vogtol plant wasn't cheap, costing $9 billion, which would be nearly $20 billion in today's dollars. In 1979, while the project's construction was just getting started, an accident took place at another nuclear plant in Pennsylvania, the Three Mile Island Unit 1 nuclear power station. But a government official said that a breakdown in an atomic power plant in Pennsylvania today is probably the worst nuclear reactor accident to date. An automatic valve on one of the reactors accidentally closed which shut off the supply of water. These gases didn't seem to cause too much damage, but it still led a lot of American citizens to ask themselves whether nuclear power was really a good idea. I was against it from the beginning. I'm against it now. Just like that, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission stopped issuing permits for nuclear power. Almost half of the plants that had already been commissioned, and in some cases already started construction, were cancelled. However, not all projects were cancelled. Construction at Plant Vogtol continued despite rising costs due to new safety regulations. Even after the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, work at Vogtol pressed on. The reality is that while nuclear energy carries certain risks, those risks are relatively low, especially when a plant is well-managed and properly maintained. 
The Vogue Toll team was confident they could avoid the mistakes made at Chernobyl, and to their credit, they were right. The plant has operated smoothly for several decades, generating just under 20 million megawatt hours of electricity annually, which is a remarkable output. Vogue Toll ranks among the top 10 power sources in the U.S. It's a great example of the genuine benefits that nuclear power can bring to a country when everything goes to plan. And that's probably why the power plant's owners, with the backing of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, have decided to expand the project. By the early 2000s, attitudes in the U.S. toward nuclear energy began to shift. George W. Bush had just taken office and launched a program called Nuclear Power 2010, aimed at establishing new nuclear plants across the country, with generous subsidies offered to participating companies. Some referred to this period as a nuclear renaissance. At the time, the Palo Verde nuclear power station was the largest electricity producer in the U.S., but in 2006, the Vogue Toll team set their sights on surpassing it. They planned to build two additional reactors, bringing their total to four and positioning themselves as the largest nuclear power source in the nation. Several factors influenced the decision to expand. The southeastern U.S. was experiencing rapid population growth, leading to higher electricity demand. Additionally, nuclear power was viewed as crucial for cutting greenhouse gas emissions. The new reactors were also expected to be safer, more efficient, and quicker to build than older models. In 2006, Team Vogue Toll got in touch with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and officially applied for a permit which was issued. The NRC did make them change their health and safety measures though. In particular, they insisted that the two new generators would be properly protected from seismic activity. Finally, in March 2013, construction teams started building two nuclear reactors at the Vogtol site. As of today, both reactors have been officially completed and connected up to the power grid. Vogtol 2.0 is the first newly constructed nuclear units that America has seen in just over 30 years. According to Vogtol's official website, each of the two new reactors weighs more than the Statue of Liberty. Along with their containment buildings, they required as much steel as 25,000 cars and enough concrete to build a sidewalk stretching from Miami to Seattle, which is over 5,000 kilometers. Most of this steel and concrete is used to safely contain radiation. These reactors aren't just enormous, they're also highly advanced. They feature state-of-the-art safety systems, including an automatic shutdown mechanism that doesn't need human intervention or external power. This design, known as the AP-1000 reactor, represents a significant leap forward in nuclear technology, and Vogtol was one of the first plants to implement it. The new reactors also use fewer pipes and valves than older models, making the overall design cleaner, safer, and far more efficient. Once fully operational, these reactors will double Vogtol's original output, making it the largest single energy source in the U.S. Additionally, the four reactors combined will provide enough carbon-free electricity to prevent millions of tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. However, this advancement came with a hefty price tag. The new reactors cost $35 billion, on top of the billions already invested in the original ones. The outcome of Vogtol 2.0 will have far-reaching consequences for the future of nuclear energy in the U.S. The project showcases the potential of advanced nuclear technologies like the AP-1000 and could inspire further investment in nuclear power as part of the clean energy shift. However, if another unexpected accident occurs, it could reinforce the view that nuclear energy is too dangerous to be a key player in the future energy landscape. One thing is certain, countries that opt out of nuclear energy will need alternative sources. Ideally, they would turn to renewables like wind farms or hydroelectric dams, but that's not always practical. To generate the same amount of power as Vogtol, the U.S. would need a wind farm spanning 1,000 square kilometers. Another alternative is fossil fuels like coal or oil, 
but these are clearly harmful to the environment. A plant like Vogtol, on the other hand, produces carbon-free energy. So, is the risk worth it? In some ways, it feels like an impossible choice. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.